Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again, and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, a subject that uh, I might be telling you more than you really want to know, but I want to talk about the actual diameters of the collars on the cross slide and the compound of uh, different lathes. Now this is an older South Bend compound, and uh, it's really a piece of junk because someone had cracked out uh, the uh, tool post T-slot obviously put too much muscle on it and they probably had the tool post too close to the edge. Anyway, that's the South Bend and notice how small in diameter the uh, actual dial is. In fact it's about 7 eighths diameter on this one. And same thing with the Atlas. Now, this is an older Atlas. In fact the graduations are so close together that sometimes they almost uh, touch one another and just, it's just very hard to read them. But that's the way they did it in the olden days. I don't know if it never occurred to them to make it make them a little bit larger but on the, the Atlas since they are not uh, cut in there very deep you know it, I had to take some rust off that one. They're very very hard to read. Anyway my point is that the larger the collars are the better they are. I am now standing before my Atlas Craftsman 12 inch lathe and uh, notice how much bigger the dials are on this particular lathe. This is the cross feed and uh, they're about one and three quarter inch in diameter so it's so much easier to read than uh, the original ones. So that's uh, one thing to watch for you know when you're buying a lathe uh, that uh, uh, it, it's easier to read them, easier to use the lathe, and a little bit more accurate to adjust them uh, the larger they are. Now I once worked on a uh, English built, British built uh, turret lathe and I'll swear the dials on it were about three and a half inches in diameter and it was so easy to read. You could read it from halfway across the room. These are the dials on my clausing 12 inch lathe and they're about two and a half inches in diameter and uh, to make it even better they are satin chrome finish and just very easy to read uh, and it's a pleasure to use this machine because of this feature alone. That one's. Now let's go out in the cold garage and take a look at my South Bend lathe. Now I'm out in the garage and I'm standing by my uh, South Bend 9 inch precision lathe and I've laid this old compound alongside the newer one although this lathe was built in 1959 so it's not exactly new but uh, a comparison here between the older collars on the compound and I don't know what year this was built and then the one built in 1959 and it's so much larger in diameter easier to read and it's satin chrome as well and that goes for the crossfeed uh, dial right below it. Now I'm standing before the Hardinge lathe and you know uh, there, I don't think there's any finer lathe made than a Hardinge and uh, they use uh, two and a half inch dials and they're some kind of white plastic but I've never seen dials that were easier to use than this. Now this uh, crossfeed dial is a uh, the type of dial that when I move it ten thousandths it's actually going to take ten thousandths off of the diameter of the lay of the work. When you look at the other uh, dial in the compound notice that the graduations are farther apart than what they are here because this is really half a lay. This is a speed lathe or a second operation lay that sometimes it's called and normally the compound is kept in uh, this position and you're doing your longitudinal feed with uh, the compound therefore that would be direct reading so if I would turn it uh, let's say ten thousandths the travel of the tool actually is ten thousandths so that's the hardinge lathe now this is the dial on uh, Bridgeport Mill. I know we're off lathes for a second here but these are uh, three inch diameter dials so they're quite easy to read. 
uh, I think you can see here the relationship between the diameter of the dial and the ease of reading, especially as you enter old age. I know I'm beating a dead horse, or beating the subject into the ground, but uh, again, here was my sample of different dials that I made. Uh, this is just PVC plastic, and I, uh, I indexed them so that uh, it was the equivalent of 60 graduations uh, for the full diameter. But notice the difference here the, on this real small one here, where I had to use a fine point marker to even keep them from uh, uh, running one into the other. And, and on this one with a fat marker they're almost touching each other and as we get into the larger ones you know there's just plenty of room between the graduations and uh, it would be a, a lot easier to read now you say well so what I got what I got on South Bend Lays for a while there there was a, a retrofit where you could buy new dials but I think it also involved buying the entire new uh, screw for the cross feed or the compound which would not be cheap and I'm not sure that they are still available but you might uh, look into it and see if they are and uh, if you can afford it go with it but uh, and if it doesn't bother you what you got and you're used to it I guess that's no problem either but uh, this is my little dialogue on the size of the dials or the diameter of the dials. Tubal Cain saying so long for now.